uh, enable screen sharing too. Uh, okay, it looks like I'm recording yes. now. I'll go ahead and uh, mute the audience. And Jim, it's all yours. Uh, did you enable screen sharing? Host disabled. You might need to switch over uh, the control. I don't have this. I can't share my screen. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead and try again. My bad. Okay, it is working. All right. All right, can you see my uh, screen, big orange? Yep. Great. And um, OK, so um, let's get started then. Uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, robot that I've been building the last several months, uh, which is uh, a, um, uh, a build uh, based on this kit from uh, DF Robot uh, and um, the actual hardware. The overall design, you, the overall robot, as you might have read in the intro, is uh, a, um, it's essentially a, a, sl a slam based robot with LiDAR and part of the, the, the major components are the SlamTech SDP Mini, which is a, a small robot, which you'll see in a minute, that um, combined with uh, taken apart and repurposed onto this uh, mobile, this larger robot. So I had it for a year, the small one, and then it, with all of its features, and it's designed for you to, it's designed essentially as a, uh, a test bed. So you can take it apart and um, reassign, or basically reconfigure the size and, the, uh, and the, the dimensions in the software and then put, put the LiDAR onto a larger robot. So that's what this, pro and then get all the same features and then keep going from there. So, I guess I'll go over the hardware first of this one, and um, and then we'll get into the uh, the software and the other parts. So here's the this mobile platform. This one's still available. Um, I highly recommend shopping on Black Friday if you're going to buy anything from DF Robot because they every year they uh, give a twenty percent discount on. Their, a lot of their stuff, not the, not everything, but uh, but some of the, a good portion of it. So this uh, tower-based robot is a good platform. It's a little expensive, but I mean it. it it's kind of uh, you get what you pay for. It's it's a nice uh, it's a nice base platform that you don't have to build yourself. You can you just need to assemble it. Uh, although it only comes with the motors and uh, the hardware you see here, the wheels, the motors, and some bump sensors, uh, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't come with any with electronics. Uh, so here's what it looks like, um, and uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, so you don't have to. A lot of people build these robots. You have to. You know, put together, find, you, know, you have to do some metal work or, uh, or find parts. And it, this, I just didn't want to go through all that. And I had the cash. So, uh, so here's the, the motors. Uh, they're 12 volt motors. Uh, they have um, encoders with, uh, as you can see there, the ticks per revolution. They're, they're yeah, two phase hall encoders. Uh, and um, they, uh, yeah, the stall current there. So they're pretty good. They're pretty good size and powerful uh, motors. And um, okay, this is 
this was the first version when I uh, I showed this robot a few months ago uh, when I just put together the couple of the first two levels and powered it with an Arduino with a little screen. And but, so just testing out the basic functionality and using an Arduino to drive the whole thing uh, and basically making it doing a very simple PID loop to make it make both wheels go essentially straight. And that was sort of the first iteration uh, I wanted to that was I was able to test all the, the components that uh, it came with the, 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 the basic the uh, uh, the initial components that I bought, which is the motor controller, uh, the powering, and uh, the uh, the the uh, the motors themselves and the encoders. So getting all that and uh, DF robot for each of these components, there was a DF robot. It's pretty good. They have a wiki, a wiki, and with examples. What, what, the wiki was pretty good. Some of the the some of the stuff on the actual DF robot website, for when the stuff is where the stuff is for sale, that has a that isn't always. That's okay, but then you click on a wiki link and it will give you actual sample code for your Arduino. So that was really cool. And I so I was able to test all the components, um, those components anyway. So here's the SDP Mini that I had bought a year before. And I had played with this thing just as you see it there uh, with its software and mapping rooms and driving around. Uh, manually driving and mapping, and then having it go places just by clicking on a on a map uh, that that you made. And so that's a good little robot. Um, they discontinued it, unfortunately. I th you might be able to still get it somewhere. Again, I got this for five, 400 with the 20% off. So the, one of the most the uh, the most critical. You know the cool. I'd say the coolest piece of hardware in this whole thing is this uh, laser range scanner, and um, it's normally like three hundred and thirty dollars nowadays, from, even from Banggood. But that whole thing I bought for this was four hundred when I got it on sale. So this is, and I got one of these. So it's that was a good deal. There may be other good deals out there. I have not looked. But yeah, it goes quite a far distance and it has, um, it, it's very uh, silent and um, has good precision. So it's, it only, you're only getting a slice of the world, but in a lot of cases, that's good enough. So um, I'll, anytime anybody has a question, just to, um, I can't see everybody, but you can raise your hand. Or, uh, or just start talking. I think oh, yeah. For anyone who has any, I'm sorry, I don't mean to shut everyone out, but if you have anything to ask or say or jump in, go ahead and unmute yourself and, and ask. The only reason I mute everyone at the beginning is because sometimes there's a lot of crosstalk or accidental crosstalk. Uh, but yeah, just like I'm doing now, jump in, ask away. And I can see like one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 people on half my screen. <laughs> So it's, it's kind of this. I think this is a good way that you can see your see the audience a little bit um, while covering part of your presentation. But I'm the one that made it. So <clears throat> so the uh, the Slam Tech main board is this STM32 breakout, uh, and that uh, has this component called the Slamware Core. That is the um, and you, I'll have a pay, I have some information on that coming up. But the Slamware Core is your is your proprietary uh, hardware and software, and that handles the path planning and the mapping and all that stuff. And there's an API, the C++ API that you can use it with. So it drives the light of it. So this this board breakout board is a um, has open source firmware, and it's the thing that drives the LiDAR, and it, it interfaces the network, Windows, the Windows CPU, which I also will show you, 
and then the motors and various sensors. You can have up to four sonars. It's got the pins and two bump switches, although I have a third, which I'm using one of the general purpose, so I have three bump. And then I think two IR sensors, or maybe a more, or maybe another one, I'm not sure. Uh, but that, uh, uh, that's what that board looks like. This is a slightly older picture of it. Uh, and it's an ARM, yeah, an ARM-based system. And you, you actually get the source code for that, and you can, uh, and I had to play with it to get it to uh, uh, adapt it to my build. So this is what the board looks like, um, the diagram. And you can see it's got, uh, this is where the, the P, and mini PCIe is where that proprietary card goes. And then you've got, uh, you've got the motor interface up here. Um, that the pins are really assigned in software and what's written here doesn't, <laughs> It actually doesn't, isn't like, it's kind of out of date. I guess that's the problem with silk screening. Uh, when your software changes, your, your board, you know, your silk screen doesn't matter anymore. So ultrasonic sensors, the infrared and bumpers are here. Um, these are all bro broken out uh, so you can plug in with your, uh, your cables. Network is a regular network car, um, uh, ethernet cable. And then the power, uh, and uh, so that was another issue. Something that I'm new to is designing a robot with power. You know, getting the power figured out. Uh, and I bought a nice big lipo battery for that. But making the different rails uh, for the five and the twelve volt, I've never done that, so I had to learn how to do that with like a perf board. And uh, you'll see a little bit of that. So the next component is the motor driver, the H bridge. Uh, so this one is two times 15 amp, pretty beefy. Uh, I'm not gonna use that much. The robot can go quite fast if you let it, uh, but I'm only using it at quite a slow speed. So um, for those that know, or who are more familiar with PWM and, um, there's some information here, and then it's it's uh, it's essentially can handle both wheels, both wheel motors, and that's forty five dollars. That um, so that one is a critical component, obviously. Uh, the next component, this is the Windows machine, uh, which is the uh, it's the cerebrum of the robot, the high the high brain. Uh, the other, I call this, um, the slam tech arm here, this is the mid brain and it actually is in the mid, mid level. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that worked, but, and then, uh, the windows machine is in the top level. So the latte panda Delta, and this might, uh, by the way, a lot, uh, a bunch of this may be review for those of you who, have, who saw Dr. Bruce's, uh, presentations in, in the past, um, uh, all this, I'm in a subgroup called the, uh, uh, the uh, it's a special interest group for AI, uh, uh, the RSSC AI SIG. And so there's a bunch of us that are developing the same, uh, using the same Slam Tech SDP mini as the base, or as the, well, I guess as the, the critical um, path planning mapping robot, and then, adapting it to our own individual larger robots. So I'm the first one to, to have this HCR, this uh, orange thing in this group anyway. So this thing is a really cool device. I mean, for $228, uh, it has, you know, full Windows 10 Pro installed and licensed, and it's got everything you could possibly, you know, it's just, you can, uh, it's it's a reasonable power, um, and it's got a built-in Arduino, Leonardo, which I haven't even used yet, but uh, that, and it's got, like, comes pre-installed with, uh, with Arduino IDE and tells you how to configure it. You can just start building things and use the onboard Arduino uh, right from Windows. So I'm looking forward to trying that. And... Um, and it's got all their normal GPIO and uh, uh, 
you know, IO stuff so that you usually see. And it's got the standard Windows stuff with USB ports and Bluetooth and HDMI. Uh, it also has another, it also has a, uh, well, it has external memory. I'm gonna, I just ordered an M2 uh, PCIe, like one terabyte. Um, and I'm gonna try plugging that in now to get a nice amount of mass storage. And that's, that's really good. And then you can also plug in a small screen to it as well uh, through a cable that you can buy, like a mini screen, which I believe Dr. Bruce did. So um, any, any questions? And I'll start going through the different levels of the robot. So where um, okay, the base level is, uh, whoops, base levels here, it's got the battery, motor driver, motor with encoders, the power switches, circuit breakers. So you're looking there at the, um, uh, the motor driver and, the, and the, the motors, and in the back is the battery. I'll have a picture of that uh, coming up. And so here's the, uh, here's the back of the robot with the, on, the main power switch. And I put in a, uh, it's conveniently this uh, circuit breaker fit right in one of those little holes. So I have a 12 amp circuit breaker there for the, that's for the 12 volt supply. And then there's a four amp for the five volt. I was trying to understand how you pick the value of a circuit breaker. And, um, you know, it's a little tricky. And so I took a guess like, you know, many, it'd be several times what I'd need because uh, you're just trying to prevent uh, a huge draw from frying. Uh, Jim? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. How much current do you need to, uh, for the thing, for the thing that you chose that circuit breaker for, you need need 12 amps or what? Well, no, yeah, it, it um, I think I'd only need like, I don't know, like five or six or something. It's not very much. I mean, I'm not, not gonna. That. Is that hooked up to the main power? Yeah, so the, the 12 volt goes through this circuit breaker that on the positive side and then before it goes through to the, you know, to connect to the rail. So if something well, goes let, higher than 12 volts, this is- Unless your power supply is gonna pull 12 volts or to run the whole thing or- 12 amps, I mean, uh, you're a bit overkill on that, don't you think? Uh, well, you yeah, know, they had different ones, so I wasn't sure, you know, how. Usually, well, usually you want to put the circuit breakers on, maybe the uh, motor motors on the motors and stuff, uh, on the other parts of the thing that are, you know, the computer and stuff's not running on. But if you put a 12 amp breaker in there expecting you're gonna draw 12 amps, you never, it'll never pop. Yeah, I mean, it, well, this is for safety. I, actually, I, I asked this guy, I guess you can, there's a lot of literature on how to do this. I didn't go through it all, but uh, the electronics story guy was like, you know, you don't really need to put breakers on every individual device. Put, you, you know, he suggested just put one um, on each of the, your the, rails. The things that are going to draw the most current are your motors. Yeah, that's on the 12. You want to probably put a breaker on that to figure how much maximum current the motors are going to draw, depending on what you're going to do, and put a breaker on that's either that or slightly less than that. So you'll never get to that point, and it always will trip before it, it, it you stalls out or whatever. Uh, but just to put a blind 12 amp breaker on the main power, you, 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 it's, you, you're never going to have a condition where that will trip. If you ever get a short, it'll trip. Yeah, it's for shorts. Yeah, that's the main part here. That's that was my original well, goal, but usually you want to go figure out what the current is and go a little bit less because you don't want it to trip up to 12 amps. You by the time it gets to that point, you may have may have destroyed all the circuitry. Yeah, that was the question I had. I'm still a little bit, you know, this is a new area for me, but the, the motors are 3.6 amp stall on each one, so that would be so I would know, put a deep. Uh, if you want to put a breaker on the on the, on the motors for the uh, you know, main power going to that, I would put something in there like maybe two or three amps or something like something. Uh, you know, if it's going to pull three amps, you might want to yeah probably probably go three amps on that. 
Well, it's three point six to stall, so uh, that means well, you, that never know, you never know what's going to happen. The robot can get in some weird things, and the motor stall out on you. So you want to go below the stall, huh? A little bit. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm open to advice on this. <laughs> I've, I've done. I've done things. I've literally. I've blown up a an Adreno with power accidentally. Yeah. Uh, when I when I was doing some stuff uh, for another company there, I I didn't fuse it right or whatever, and then the power actually when it shorted, it actually blew a hole in the Adreno chip on an Adreno nano board and blew out oh. all the power traces on it. In the chip, wow. Yeah, I was uh, I was doing a thing where I was making a uh, working on a mechanism that would lift the whole. Uh, exercise the machine up and down at an angle and miscalculate on the current side on one of it and it, it, it just literally I destroyed the board yeah yeah you know this this is sort of just my a quick shot in the dark to um, prevent shorts from causing bodily injury I guess or whatever I mean well, I just had to remake for uh, one of my clients here as, as I call the dinosaur lady she's got these walk around dinosaur costumes she's gonna wear she shorted out the electrical system on one of the dinosaurs and blew the whole thing or whatever. And mm -hmm. the thing was never fused to begin with. Yeah, that was, you know, Jim Oberzetze, you know, he said, you, you're running this with no fuses or no, you know, so, um, but I'm going to reconfigure uh, this. This costume was built, this costume was built in China and then he just, just wired all the power, one power run the whole thing. I had to separate it into two separate circuits. One to, to run the video stuff and one to run the fans separately. So I, Fuse the fuse both circuits, so it it uh, it'll you know if it pulls more than a couple amps, it's going to pop a fuse. You know. Yeah, the reason I did it here, like one for each, because essentially I have several devices that are powered by the 12 volts, and you know, so those are um, those are essentially in parallel, right? Parallel using the battery on multiple uh, devices, so you know, all of them together. Will draw a certain amount of current. You know, that's that was the addition well, when, of all the currents. You know, other than the five volts is what are we running? We're running twelve volts anywhere else in the thing, and depending on what it's hooked up to you know, with, it, with it, I would, I would, I would individually fuse them myself just to play it oh, safe. You like individual fusing? Okay, good. Uh, um, so here, let me, uh, I'll, uh, let me continue. Um, so this is what the battery looks like. Uh, I'm gonna meet myself. What's that? Yeah, thanks. I just muted my, I'm going to mute me out so yeah, I don't and talk on top of you or anything. Yeah, right. oh, well, thank you. Thanks for the advice. I'm going to, re, I'm going to be redoing the, or, or, you know, honing in the power stuff and the fuses. So this is a 12 volt lithium uh, and it's got the uh, five volts as well. And this thing is really great. I mean, I, I only recharged it once in my, development although i have didn't have all them you know driving it around the house until recently but it's a pretty good battery um so here's the second level now that you can see under the hood so on the right side there is the slam tech board uh the uh breakout board and on the left side is my power rail um with the 12 volt on one half and five volt on the other half and you can see Ethernet cable coming through there. That's going uh, to the uh, PC, the, the Windows computer that's upstairs from there. Uh, so this is, and then all the, the bump sensors and, and uh, eventually sonar, I'm gonna hook in the sonar uh, as well. They all plug into this. And uh, the, the, motor, the motor controller or the, the um, lines plug in back here. Uh, and so that's, that's the mid level. And then the, the firmware runs on that is this uh, firmware that I had to uh, rewrite the motor driver part. So um, I'll get to that. Now, here's the top level, the cerebrum or the forebrain. And that's the uh, Windows machine there and the, um, and the slam tech, uh, the LiDAR um, on the top. And uh, so here's the completed unit. Uh, from the this is from the back and also there's a uh, for speaking and for the audio and uh, uh, the, I happen to have a, a decent uh, Samsung Bluetooth speaker which fits nicely in here I haven't mounted it or secured it down yet but 
I think it's quite convenient uh, for me to just utilize that kind of device for the, for the uh, speaker and the microphone built in. Now here's the side view. And these are like 13 inch, what is it 13? Not 13, uh, seven inch, seven inch wheels or something, six inch. They're um, a pretty good size wheel. And it's very sturdy, uh, this aluminum uh, bay, aluminum case. And then these are the bumpers, uh, which right now, when you, if you bump it, this, it just stops the robot, but you know, that's at least something. And here it is running, um, just a still picture. You can see the, the slam text going. So uh, the next, I'll, I'll tell you about the, um, the basic uh, diagram of how things are hooked up. Uh, again, we have the, uh, well, the, we start at the, uh, the top here, the, the Latte Panda Windows CPUs up here. Is, uh, and this is maybe review for some of you from Dr. Bruce's uh, design, which is very similar although it does have some differences. Uh, the ethernet connects to the SlamTech STM32, uh, which that connects to the LiDAR and um, the motor encoders go into there. Um, and, it go, and of course it drives the motor driver, which drives the motors down here. And the bump sensors go in and the sonar to be done goes in as well as sensors. And, uh, it's a little unclear. I just got confirmation from the SlamTech uh, company that even my version of uh, SlamWare Lite, it's the Lite version, uh, it still should be able to handle the inputs from these devices and uh, make, a, you know, make an action based on that, like stop the robot or, or when it's too close to something, basically taking into account but its main sensor that I'm showing you and that really functions, does most of the work is the LiDAR. Um, but if something is below the LiDAR or above the LiDAR, something above the LiDAR shouldn't be a problem because that's above the robot, but below the LiDAR, uh, the robot, if it's smaller than like a, a cat or something, it could like, you know, it's not gonna see it. Uh, so the next is the firmware and the software. Uh, so this, uh, again, I'll tell you about the Slamware core. This is proprietary Linux system. And I, I booted it up and connected a serial line and could see it, the whole the Linux uh, booting up. Uh, up. Uh, but I couldn't log into it. It's, it had a password, but I don't know how to log into that. But that implements the map building, uh, the path planning, and, and uh, the controlling. So it's, it's a, and you can access it through the, or the motion control, through the STM uh, breakout board, which is open source. Uh, that one, um, uh, and that's compiled with the embedded workbench that I, I had to download. So I had to work on this for a, a bit of time. Um, I don't know how long, it was a few days of effort really to, uh, and I'm a, I'm a software engineer by training, or I didn't introduce myself yet, but I am a uh, career software engineer. And um, so I'm used to working with different IDEs. And so anyway, I figured out um, how to, you know, get into this one. And, and we are also are other members of our, uh, the, SIG, the, the AI group have been working on this in the past. So I had to adapt the motor driver code um, to work with my particular drivers and my particular encoders. So that was a, a nice uh, uh, experience I got. And, and um, we're looking into their code and getting it to, uh, and getting it to sort of um, dovetail into what they were expecting. And they send that data back up to the SLAMware, uh, that code. And so in the Windows code, and this is developed by our members, um, as like completely the STM, the, the, the firmware here, we worked on it, um, but most of it is, is it was given to us. So the SlamTech DLL layer um, is a layer for calling the SlamWare C++ API from other languages. And uh, this was done um, by, uh, by Gary. Um, and I'll give some credits later here. 
And then my SDP is a, a C++ program that uh, he also wrote and that um, and, uh, it has some common use high level commands and, and does the voice recognition, voice synthesis using the SAPI S API, but it's pretty good. Um, I mean, it's pretty, it's basic. It can handle uh, saying some commands and, and uh, or, or receiving commands and then talking back to you. And it doesn't require the internet. So it's uh, the first level of sort of um, that kind of API or that kind of uh, feature where we're getting. So these are some of the useful Slamware core APIs. Um, move to locations, you can give it a bunch of locations and then it'll go from one to the other. Move, move by, it, 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 you can just read these different, you can even get the whole laser scan, whoops, uh, which I have done where it'll give you back all the distances and you can start playing with that data. And so I did that trying to, I started writing an algorithm to go uh, to like explore a room finding the longest axis of the room and going down it and uh, automatically and then going back the other way. And in the process, the mapping is on by default. And so it's mapping all this time. And so I want, I'm, this is another effort that I'm gonna revisit. I started like a year ago and I didn't go back to it, but I got it to go down in one room and sort of basically do the basic map of a single room. And the next thing would be to find the door and go out the, to the next room and repeat. Uh, and of course, yeah, it can see that there's an opening. So, uh, you know, I guess there's some caveats here. Like you have to start the robot, you know, when you first put it down, don't put it inside of a door or it'll, it'll think that's part of the room. You know, it's, it's, there's some issues with this algorithm uh, that I have to figure out, but you can also uh, recover from, you can, uh, there's a, uh, a call for recover localization. So if you move the robot, um, kidnap it, there, and you do have a, like, if you have a rectangular area that you know it's approximately in, then uh, the system will rotate the robot around and sort of try to match uh, its current LIDAR data with the map, and, and it will snap the robot's location back to where it's supposed to be. So um, at that point, I think we're ready for the video demo. If, uh, unless there's any other questions, uh, this will be like a five minute, less than five minute video of the whole thing in action. All right, ready? Orange, rotate right 90. Okay, rotate right 90. Orange, rotate left 90. Okay, rotate left 90. Orange, go to living room. Okay. Living room. Moving. You can see it has, uh, it can get through some tight spots, uh, but not always, it's not always, uh, it has to take a little time sometimes. And you can adjust the dimensions of the, like the buffer zone. 
Did you say go to living room? Yeah. How many rooms does it know? Uh, it knows like, I think I gave it four or five rooms. Kitchen, living room, dining room. Voltage. Okay. Voltage. Battery percent equals 100. You can put as many rooms as you want. Get location. Okay. Get location. Location. X equals zero point zero four seven five seven zero. Y equals dash three point seven five 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 three. So it, the, the rooms are just in a coordinate location. Go home. Okay, go home. Moving. Now here's where you get to see something interesting. I'm in the way, so I, I didn't move out in time, I think. And so the robot's trying to plan a way another way but what it doesn't realize is that either that or it's wanted to go out and look out the window for to see the squirrels i don't know but uh it decides to it's trying to go uh that way where the lidar can't see a wall so it thinks oh maybe i can go this way to the room and then it decided no i don't think so <laughs> And then it turns around and comes the other way. How long did it take to, before you could uh, identify rooms and get in and out of them? Well, that's the, the slam tech. You mean the um, yeah the original slam tech robot could could do all this you know using the uh, slamware or using the Robo Studio. Uh, well, you would just click. You click where you want it to go. You've seen that demo, right? Where at the yeah the, at the at the RSS, at our meeting, essentially, I'll show you the map in, in a second. But the, um, the last time I saw this robot, it was pretty much non-functional. So what's that about three months ago? Oh, you're talking about the or orange. It was orange. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about orange. I wouldn't call it completely non-functional. Well, yeah, it did, didn't have this. Like I said, this. Um, the first iteration, I just hooked up an Arduino to it, and I had a little screen, and I could press buttons on it to go. I remember that, yeah. Right. Okay. So it took you, what, two or three months to get this far? Or yeah, was so it I've been familiar. So yeah, it took another, um, like, uh, two months or so, or yeah, almost two months. I, I had this ready, like, a little less than it is now for last month's meeting. I didn't have it with all this audio and all that. <laughs> In the time since the last month's meeting that we would have had, I decided, hey, let's get the, the voice stuff in and all that. And now you'll see, I'll give some credits because um, uh, this, is, this is a multi-person project, really. Um, so the RSSEAI SIG group uh, gave me a lot of support and um, uh, this is uh, our this, this is our group right here. Dr. Bruce, of course, with all the work he's done. Alex, um, who did the, a lot of the work on the initial breakout board firmware. I had to rewrite some of that, but um, and, you know, for mine, I had to rewrite it. But uh, but you know, he had a lot of information and initial code that I could look at. And then Gary uh, wrote this. Um, the my SDP. This is over a year ago. I think he wrote this, and uh, the Slam Tech DLL. I'm not using that yet, but that's for Python and uh, Access or other languages. The my SDP is what you saw running today, where, um, which is that's Gary's work, and I'm going to be building on that. And then John has been building his at the same time I am, so uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. Jim, so you're programming it in C++. Yeah, it's all in C plus plus. That's my you know my kind of language of choice. But I haven't decided whether to go to Python or not. I haven't got to that level of I mean that point in the project. If people highly recommend the Python, I might. I know Dr. Bruce uses Python. Uh, I might decide to go in that direction because um, well a lot the Python I like for the Google Voice text to speech and. Um, and Google Assistant. I've already been doing that in Python. And so 
I don't know if that has an easy C++ interface to do those things. So you may want to, to um, run uh, your main functions in, uh, eventually in Python. I haven't, what are you, you're using C++ too, right? No, I'm using Gary's DLL and I'm doing it all in Python. Okay, yeah, you're using- Which I haven't written much not Python before, so to some extent it's an experiment. But uh, I think it can do everything. Well, it does everything what Dr. Bruce does. That's what I want. Yeah, I, I was thinking of going to the Python next. Uh, you know, this this has got a lot of possibilities going forward. Um, here's my future plans: is to fine tune movements uh, issues, and the P, there's a PID in there that I had to. Uh, I they gave me a value. Um, also, I, I should thank in this list here the. Um, Oops, the uh, uh, DF Robot had a, uh, a tutorial, or I'm sorry, a blog with three different um, web pages on uh, using the HCR, that orange robot, essentially, and combining it with the, uh, the, the SDP mini, or the, at least the, the Slamware. So that also helped me. Uh, so the future plans, uh, um, you know, fine tuning things and getting the movement better, uh, adding the sonar sensors, add the cloud based speech recognition, which is some of the other guys uh, that's Dr. Bruce has done this in Python. That'll be in Python. But I want to, I, I got to do something that, that other people haven't done. I, so uh, I want to add a camera or the Xbox Connect, which that tower, remember that picture of the, the original, the first picture I showed you that has a tower, this, uh, I have the, the hardware to can put an Xbox Connect physically on there. So I got to do that and use it somehow. It'll plug right into the Windows machine, right? Um, and then I wanted to get it to follow a person around someday that I had started working in that, dabbled in there, uh, that effort in a, pro in a uh, contest uh, at my company. And then of course the top priority is Put a cup holder on her and get it to de deliver a drink. <laughs> I mean, that would be the uh, that would be the holy grail. But uh, <laughs> I have a question. Will... Here. Yeah. Um, if you could, you say go to coordinates. You know, x whatever three five five blah blah blah. Those coordinates that he said to you, could you tell him to go to those coordinates from a different room, and he would know how to do that, or would you? you could specify the room first or whatever, but do you know what I'm saying? In fact, I mean, all the room is, is in, is in the, um, is in our code, uh, our, the application that I'm using. I just, we just save some coordinates and call it kitchen or call it, um, living room. So I just, what, what, oh, and I guess, wait a minute. I, oh, I didn't add one of the pictures that I wanted to show you, but, uh, the map, Let's see if I, I should have, I hope I can get to that. Uh, essentially the, it's all in coordinates and um, you, I just saved, saved certain coordinates and called it the kitchen. And so then I tell the speech recognition, you know, I'm gonna, you know, that to, to uh, I'm going to say, these are some keywords that I'm going to say, like kitchen, dining room, whatever. And then when it hears that word, it just finds the, goes, looks up the coordinates of that room from a table. Uh, so yeah, you could, you can tell it to go to any coordinates. Um, uh, and you could certainly, I haven't done this, but you could, you could probably get the speech recognition, uh, you know, to, to take the coordinates by number and then just, then you just call the routine that says go to coordinates. And uh, which I, that was in the, that was one of these routines that you can call it. I've only listed a very few of them here, but uh, there's, there's a very rich API um, that you can call, right? Yeah, uh, these are some of them here. But this one, move to location, that's in coordinates. And so, yeah, you know, it's just up to you getting the, the, voice, the speech recognition and parsing uh, if you wanted to do that. And now um, I need to show you the map. Where did the, let's see if I've got the, uh, I wanted to show you the uh, 
before we call it quits here, let's see. It's probably in my documents folder. Uh, yeah, see this file here is my house and um, that is the full map of it. And uh, that is, uh, so that's the file that gets loaded. Jim, you, you you're going to have to share that on the screen. You're only sharing the PowerPoint. Oh. I don't know. Oh, How do I do that? Um, I'm going to go back to the. Oh, I can say stop sharing and then share it. Yeah. Well, this is just a file list, but um, well, now I, now you can see my Windows screen, right? You see my desktop? No, we see your Windows Explorer. Yeah, the de you see the desktop though, right? The, like no, the... just Windows Explorer. Oh, how do you share the whole? Do you share I, the whole? I think the option is share screen, or something like that. There's advanced your portion of screen. Yeah, just. Share screen, that's all you got to do. Oh, screen. That's the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, so here's... There you go. Now we see your screen. That's the whole screen, OK. Um, OK, yeah, I, where did I put that? I took a snapshot, and um, now I'm kind of blanking on where it went of the, oh, here, well, here's, I'll just skip to this one. This is, um, this is an example of it. Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is, you see the map? You see the map? Yeah, we can see the map. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this is the map that's loaded and, uh, actually this is a, this is the one I fully annotated with uh, actual um, manually placed uh, walls uh, for, that the LIDAR wouldn't see. For instance, the, there's a coffee table and I put uh, some virtual walls around the coffee table because uh, it's, it's out of the vision of the LIDAR. It's a different level, so <laughs> it'll get stuck under there. Um, if it's, and then so you can add in these little barriers to, you know, like there's a rocking chair over here and, um, and there's like a mat over here and you know, on the floor and you don't want to get it stuck in the map. But, so for those who haven't seen this, the, the red area is where the, this red areas uh, lines are the, where the current LIDAR is seen is a wall. The black area is where it has decided it has mapped that that's solid permanent structure and uh, all these little specks are things like uh, table legs etc and um, and the current this red area like the I'm sorry there's the red lines and then there's this red region that's where the laser is is um, extending outward uh, at the current moment that this is taken and so and as you can see this part of this is not mapped um, yeah, in fact, I can play a little bit of this. Uh, I played this before at a um, previous. Uh, Go to living room. So you can see kind of how it's working. Uh, it the planner will um, create a path, and these little green dots will appear, and then it'll eat them up like Pac-Man. And this is actually was the old one. See, there's a the little guy. So I've come around full circle now. <laughs> and you see it's going to the same place even. And then, yeah, so that's the idea there is, uh, and it, 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 this, this is the, the software that came with it, Robo Studio. And um, you can still use that with my robot as well, but uh, it's, um, it's not as necessary anymore if you're programming it yourself and giving it your own commands. 
And uh, so, yeah, that's about it. If there's any other questions or things I didn't. And then when you start, you get a map like this, it's, or this is just like one room. Shouldn't we clap after he does this? I mean, yay, okay. come on, okay. everybody, yay. That's what we do in person, right? Yeah, you can use the little, mat, the little uh, clap icon, right? There's icons? I didn't know where icons were. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, if you click on your, on your, um, I don't know, where is it down at the... It's at the bar at the bottom. Reactions. It says reactions. Reactions. You can, reactions. Oh, you know, I yeah. see. Yeah, a lot of people are putting yeah. their clap. I don't have that. See, I'm so old-fashioned. I don't know. It's down at the bottom right after of next to record. Uh, it's not the same as this. It really isn't. <laughs> well, thank you. I see some people. <laughs> people are giving the thumbs up. Uh, so yeah, thank you for the opportunity to present and um, uh, I just showed you what I have now and hopefully it'll, I'll come back uh, in, the, in the future and, and give an update with newer, better, newer, improved and more interesting features. Yeah, man, you've come a long way. I can't wait to see what you do next. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah, Jim, it was really cool. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. We get that oh, thing and really talk to it then. What's that? You get that thing where you can really talk to it and start following you around. Yeah, I, I you know, I, again, I have to thank uh, Gary and the guys that did some code for that, but you know, it's uh, using that SAPI, that old Windows interface. It's, um, it's really nice. You really want a robot to answer to you. I mean, it's kind of, uh, to take commands, voice commands, it's it's what we're all used to if we have the, uh, with the Echo and the Google Assistant. Um, some, I'd say from the internet, so I didn't, from the chat room, uh, they said, how long did you get the audio to work right? Well, again, yeah, that was uh, mostly uh, Gary's work and uh, using that older sappy interface. Uh, SAPI, which it looked like pretty standard code you could grab, but I have to ask him. And um, that's about it. I guess that I'll save this chat. There's some information about the circuit breaker. Oh, that's from Ty. <laughs> and you can save the chat, by the way. You go to the three little dots on the chat room or in the, in the chat and then click save chat. And so you can read it later. If you didn't read it all. With that, I'll turn it back to our MC, Alan. All right, Jim, thanks again. That is so cool. Big orange. Yeah, it is. Thank I you. I like it. And just to think, like last year, two years ago, we were struggling to make it from point A to point B. And now you've got a device, you can say, hey, go in the living room, go in the dining room. And it's like, all right, <laughs> what else you got? Yeah, I wanted to take, I wanted to follow a person that would be really, right. I want to put a camera on it eventually, you know, but, but this, this is a platform you could build for years on, I think. Yeah, for sure. Have you, uh, do you have any ideas on how you'll do person following? Like what types of technology or a solution? Well, like I said, I started working on this um, at, at my office or at my company in a contest and uh, the, what I was using there was uh, essentially visual, vision, uh, visual, visually, basically, and using um, OpenCV uh, to uh, do essentially a person detector. It gets a bounding box of a person, and then it sits the center of the bounding box and uh, points, the, points the robot at that and goes forward. And uh, that is the basic concept. And uh, if the person goes around a corner, it gets really difficult. I had to deal with this. And I was struggling, got somewhere with it. But that particular robot had a head it could turn. So I may want to have a camera. I may want to do the same thing, where there's a camera mounted on a head and a neck. So the neck can turn and follow the person while the robot has to go forward or around the corner 
But that's that's very advanced. I, I'd like to just be able to, and that was all in a virtual uh, robot. I never did this in a real, that was a whole virtual simulation with Ross and everything, RViz. But um, to do the real thing would be a, a bit more challenging just to follow a person, say, straight first, and then, um, and then it stopped, you know, I also had it, it, it also used a, uh, a depth sen sensor. So I want a real sense or the Xbox Connect. So we'll, it, through a series of PIDs, essentially I had one PID turning the neck, one PID adjusting the wheels to stay one meter away. Uh, so it, it, it's a combination of things. To follow, following a person seems pretty hard, but I spent in quite a few hours already thinking about or working on the basics. So I figure I should pick that up sometime. But does that make sense? So it be, it's uh, open CL uh, to start with. Yeah. Maybe the AI after that. Well, yeah, you've got enough horsepower on the Panda. Another option might be to move over to like a TensorFlow or YOLO type people detector and then do the same thing. The one thing that I was running into earlier was that I could get a list of objects that are identified and their names and their their uh, bounding squares in 2D space, right? And then if you're working with a depth camera, you can kind of correlate that. You could take like the middle pixel and get the depth from it. But the one thing that I, I absolutely could not solve for is there was no guarantee that my list of people would be in the same order for every every frame or every iteration of looking for people. So the question becomes, do you just track the closest person? There's no way for me to easily track one person of many continuously. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that was another problem I was tasked with solving or trying to solve. And uh, I never got to fully, I never got to get to that point. I was only one person. Everybody else had like four people teams, five people teams. But um, I found another, an open, I'm sorry? Another thing you could try, uh, Jim, is making a little, uh, beacon thing it can home in on that you can wear oh yeah that's a, that's a good like an stuff. infrared beacon infrared beacon you could wear and they can cameras can see infrared light pretty or pretty cool or ultraviolet yeah. the beacon technique is how a lot of things work like my uh, Roomba but what I was going to say is the uh, I found an open source uh, solution where or not a solution a, an experiment essentially where through OpenSea, the, um, the, uh, it, the, it takes a picture of a bunch of people, whatever, whoever's in the room, it takes the picture of the room and the people there, and then it does a threshold of um, saturation threshold, a simple like filter essentially, and turns everything to bright colors. And then based on the shirt color, it, it kind of figures out where the, you know, it's got a face detector. So it goes down from the face, finds the, torso and then gets a color and since the color has been uh pre-processed so that like these are big blotchy areas now of one color essentially so then it assigns a color to the person so now it, it, you have a, a way of identifying which person you're supposed to follow and then that i was going to add height uh, on there too to hire the person that would work on um, you know a one-time shot but it, nobody wears the same shirts all the time, you know? Well, this is only for uh, a single session. I'm talking about like, uh, okay. this is not for, uh, yeah, I'm not shooting that kind of, or I'm not going for that kind of goal. This is essentially, you put the robot in a room with some people, tell it, you know, follow this person and the other people are milling around. The robot gets to come up to that person and photograph them and then, you know, and then it falls, and but after that, it's you know the next time you have to redo it. <laughs> but yeah, that's just some of the ideas. And I this op this um, this code to get the shirt color and that sort of thing is available, and I was starting to play with it, and uh, that, but I didn't get that far with it. Um, so that's like a it seems like a really cool thing to do is to uh, it's, a, it's a research grade. I mean. We're not re research grade, but I guess for the I mean, hobbyists, it's quite What you've impressive. done on the thing right now is pretty impressive. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of this is slam text uh, work. Uh, but, you know, I'll take credit for putting the thing together and getting it all working. <laughs>
I did a lot of fine tuning and tweaking there. Well, thanks. All right, well, that's, uh, that's it for. Thank you, Jim. That was pretty nice. Excellent. Great. Indeed. I threw that PowerPoint together last night <laughs> and this morning, really. But now, all the information is available in my stuff. I just had to throw it in. Well, it was. I liked the presentation. It was very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, here's kind of what has to happen next. I actually have to, my roommate's gonna get engaged tonight, so she's setting up a Zoom right now. So I can pass the host privileges on to someone else so the party can continue. Or if we're at a good stopping point, we can just uh, say, see you next week. What do you guys think? Does anybody else have anything else to present, uh, show and tell or anything? Well, I wanted to say something to Thomas if he's there. I'm here. Thomas, I was doing some more research on the animatronic eyes there. I found somebody actually made a whole animatronic head and face, female face. I don't know if the 3D files have the molds for the face, but it looked pretty impressive. Something you might want to, I might want to give you links on later and have you look at. Yeah, I'd like to see it. You know, I'm going to build a uh, full fembot right now, a full uh, humanoid this, uh, <laughs> Sophia type of fembot. This this lady basically is doing the same sort of thing. She's got the head down pretty, pretty cool, and uh, working on the arms and fingers and stuff. So uh, I just ran across the other day. I was doing some research, and I have found the that eye mechanism. I found it had all the movements in there. I found one. They had one, made an update on one where you now you can adjust the space between the eyes. So, uh, but in in there, I found that somebody made a full animatronic face. And all have all the 3D files for the face mechanisms and everything are available. I'm not sure about the mold for the face, but uh, I haven't looked through the 3D files on that yet. I just downloaded the stuff the other day. Yeah, please, Tim, show me uh, share that with me after the meeting. Oh, by the way, I want to ask the club: uh, Are we have do we have any experts in um, mechanics, uh, as in motion and um, gears and such? What do you need? Yeah. What do I need? Well, you know, I have those Elvises. I have, well, you know, the plural of Elvis is actually Elvi. I have approximately 20 Elvi left. And the gear from sitting out in the garage for, God, 10 plus years, the gear that turns the head uh, is crumbling in all of them, 100%. And I need to replace it. And I've talked to of course, Alan about it, and I've talked to Steve Cook, and I either need to redesign it or figure out a way to get that specific gear. I know nothing much about gears. Well, do you have any of the gears that are still intact? Well, yeah, of course I do. And you have one at your house. You just have to disassemble yours. Uh, you I, don't two of those, wanna, don't you? I don't know if I want to disassemble that one. I would still like to keep it sort of in mid condition, but... If the gears, if you get a gear pulled out of one, anything could be done, even to the point of recasting, recasting the gear and making a mold. Or uh, know, figuring out a better way to that, turn the I know head. someone out in Riverside that has, does all the special effects stuff and you, you supply the materials, so it'll make a mold, mold of that gear and be able to, from that, you'd be able to pull out a material you want in there to replace it with. All right, yeah. Uh, you have to supply that information the after the meeting as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the, enough materials in stock to do it, but if you can supply the materials, so more than likely it could, could cast you another gear. Yeah, I wouldn't um, know how to cast a gear. That's, he would. That's beyond that, I'm sure he would. Thomas, is this the same? My... Go ahead. Thomas, is this the same uh, neck pinion gear that you'd showed me once before? Yeah. It's like seven or eight teeth, maybe 10 teeth, fits on a motor shaft and it's in the, the neck or the head someplace? That's right, that's right. I remember that vaguely. <laughs> yeah, they're all going bad, 100%. And that's the only gear, that one little pinion? That's, that's it, that's the, you know, the weakest link. And then they kind of just sit up there and buzz and nothing okay. else happens. Get, get, also get back with okay. me, like this weekend. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Bill.
All right, so if we're good, thanks everyone for joining and participating. Um, a lot of great interaction and feedback, and we'll set something up for next Friday. Same bat time, same bat channel. No uh, who's going who's gonna to be presenting next Friday? Do we have anybody? Uh, I don't have you anything yet. Yeah, uh, not... Ras the robot? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think that's going to be an option, but I'll follow up. You know, we'll figure out something offline, but we'll set up we'll set up the meeting today or tomorrow for next Friday. All righty. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Stay Thank healthy. You. All right. Bye. Stay safe, everybody. All right. Bye. See you guys later. Bye.